Hello, hello, and welcome to James Lesser's Express Line Power Rankings. Today, we'll be discussing not just power rankings, but playoffs, both NFL and college. That's right, we're talking about college playoffs as well. Now, starting off with the NFL Power Rankings, Saints beat up the Falcons. The Falcons lost to the Browns, so beating the Falcons, not that big a deal, I guess, but no one else really pushed themselves this week, so... Saints remain number one. With no real competition ahead of them in the next five games, they breeze number one in both rankings and in the NFC playoffs. First seed, get the bye week. Oh, it's going to be a huge favor to them. And being able to play at home, always a boost. <clears throat> now, this is weird. The Rams and the Chiefs were both on bye week. Like two, like after that Monday night game we just had and then they go on bye week. So, not much to say about them. They can't really change the position, I guess. And really, short of injury or plane crash, they win the divisions and don't drop from here. Now, number four, Patriots. They took out the Jets. Not that big of a surprise. But they also showed that Gronk is healthy. With him healthy and Josh Gordon out there, it stresses the defense. Who do you, who do you double cover? Who do you double up on? Whichever one you don't, gets the ball and burns you. The running back actually also had a really decent game. But the Jets' run defense hasn't exactly been 100% this year. But they're still the Patriots. They had a couple stumbles this year, like against the Titans. What the hell did that come from? But they're still the Patriots. Next, number five, the Bears. They beat the Lions with Chase Daniels. <coughs> Chase Daniels. That's not a mistake. They beat the Lions with Chase Daniels. Daniels. If Mitch Trubisky was still out there, it wouldn't have even been that as close as it was. They do need Mitch Trubisky to come back, but even without him, they still beat the Lions. They'll easily win a number three seed, short of injury, of course. But, goddamn. Next, the Texans beat the Titans. The same Titans that smoked the Patriots. But, this, the Titans are Super Bowl All-Stars one week. Practice squad the next. Even if they were on one of their Super Bowl champ weeks, could they have been the Fire Hot Texans? Doubt it. Now the team that gets the number three seed in the playoffs for them is going to be the Texans. Hmm. We'll go with... <clears throat> Coin Toss. Sure. Chargers. Beat the Cardinals. Not a big victory there. And, but, Broncos beat the Steelers. This, to me, shows that losing to the Broncos last week wasn't as big as a deal as I previously thought. Previously thought. I swear I can talk. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. But, anyways. Yeah, it's just, Broncos beat the Steelers, so maybe losing to the Broncos wasn't as big of a deal. So, Cardinals, we'll keep them here. Now. The hard part comes. One team has a seven win season already, but they've sucked and gotten lucky here and there. Others only have six wins, but have performed better overall. It's like, alright, they got six wins. Well who did they lose to? The Patriots, the Chiefs, the Rams, the Saints, like so they lost to really good, incredible, just amazing teams. Not the shit tacker teams. Don't let that one win push a team that almost lost to the Blake Bortles. Higher than the others? Mm, no. Sorry, Steelers. There's something wrong with you. What? I don't know, but something. Can they turn it around? Maybe. They have the Patriots. And the Saints. And the Chargers coming up. They also have the Raiders, who they should beat, but look at how they struggled against the fucking Jags, led by Blake Bortles. And the Bungles. Again, a team that they should beat... But they almost lost to the freaking Jags, led by Blake Bortles. Shame. Even though they'll still most likely win the AFC North. Like, 90% chance, I'm sure. But then they'll get beat in the first round by a wildcard seed, because they'll be the fourth seed. Sorry, guys. Speaking of wildcards, here is was that the spot. It's not the Steelers, so it's going to be the Seahawks. They beat the Panthers... Which means they get the wild card spot. 
All right, theoretically, injury or loss, but three of the next five games involve the 49ers and the Cardinals. Three easy wins. Yes, at the Vikings. Great game coming two weeks from now. And the Chiefs. But even then, they will still get at least three wins. Possibly four. Sad face. Because I don't think they're going to beat the Chiefs, but they might. Because the Vikings, one week, are good. Another week, they're mediocre. Another week, this like the defense is good, but the offense sucks this week. The offense is good, but the special teams can't do anything. There's just too many variables and random factors with the Vikings for me to see them going, oh, no, we don't have to worry about that game. They're going to win. Like, no. So, three easy wins against the 49ers and the Cardinals, and then a 50-50 shot against the Vikings. Give them three to four wins. So, oh, man. God damn, that sucks. Man. But, here we are talking about playoffs. The Panthers have the Saints twice. A Browns team who are actually competent now. A catching on fire Winston on the Bucks. Imagine saying that after Fitzmagic for the first four weeks. And then the Falcons, who lost to the Browns. So one, possibly two wins coming up for the Panthers. Sorry, Panthers. That's not going to be good enough. You're going to miss the playoffs. Playoffs. That's right. Make sure we're talking about playoffs. Number nine will go with... Still not the Steelers. Winning one, maybe two of your last five games isn't good enough to get you here. Instead, a team that wins the East, the Cowboys. They win the East, get the fourth seed in the NFC... Partially because Alex Smith is out, so the Redskins just can't do anything. But also because of Amari Cooper. A team that averaged, like, what, three yards a pass? All right, not true, but not far off. That now throw the ball more than a yard with Cooper has been a huge change, not for the Cowboys' offense, but for any defense they face. Before, it's like, all right, have all defensive players within three yards of the scrimmage. Why? Because they can't throw the ball further than that. Now, they actually have to stretch out the defense. Well... Who knows where the ball's going to go? Huge bonus for the Cowboys. That's why they get up to number 9. Now, number 10. Finally. The team that could barely beat Blake Bortles. The team that just lost to the Broncos. The Steelers. Maybe the coach sets their asses on fire and they win 3 of the next 5 games instead of 2. They'll be the 4th seed, which for a team like the Steelers is just sad. This is a team that, 9 times out of 10, are fighting for a first round bye. They're fighting for first seed. They're fighting for second seed. And they'll be disappointed by finishing third in the AFC. Now, they're going to be the fourth seed. Just sad. Especially for a team that had so much promise at the start of the season. I mean, a lot of that had to do with Le'Veon Bell. The locker room headache he caused. <sighs> That's just, but tying the Browns and barely beating Blake Bortles, not going to cut in the AFC. And now, for the first time this year, we'll go with number 11... The Colts. They were the team that was bouncing back last week, and, well, here they are, bouncing back. Unfortunately for them, the Texans exist, but it will be them, short of injury or collapse, made it to the playoffs, even if it is as a wild card. The Colts, again, had a slow start, but then, much like the Texans, they caught on fire. They had caught on fire a week or two earlier, it'd be a dead heat for who wins the AFC South. But the Texans were able to get that spark a game or two earlier, so Colts finish 5th, maybe 6th seed. Now, teams that are bouncing back. Vikings! We face the Patriots next week, and then the Seahawks on a Monday night game, which is again, a 50-50 game. If everything goes right, yeah, the, Vi the Vikings win easily if everything goes right, but very rarely does that happen. And we have the last game of the year, week 17, the Bears. But we also have the Dolphins and the Lions. So, two, possibly three wins. And again, if everything goes right, we, we could beat the Bears if everything went right. So, we could easily finish 9-4-1, 10-3-1. It may not be the record the team was shooting for at the start of the season, but it might just be enough to get them that sixth seed. Again, Panthers, you're going to miss out. Now, you're on to the rip section. The Titans. 
Sorry, guys. Playing the best football ever four weeks out of the year and one just good enough to win. Then sucking six weeks out of the year means you miss the playoffs. How do you smoke the Patriots one week and then just do nothing in the next? Just makes no sense. Actually, there's like two weeks before, between them, but that's besides the point. They just go from, holy crap, we just put up 50 points to, yay, we got a first down. It's fourth quarter. It's junk time. They let you just get a first down. Sad face. <sighs> now, here we are for college. Top four going to the playoffs. The winner between Alabama and Georgia, most likely Bama, Notre Dame, Clemson, as long as they win the championship game of their division and all that, which they should. Only real mystery is who places the loser of the Bama-Georgia game. If Bama loses, they could only drop three spots to the fourth, but unlikely. So they or Georgia loses, they drop out of the top four. Do you go with Oklahoma if they beat the Texans? Or OSU, if they beat Northwestern. Well, this pick helped me decide who, and I hope it does for you, too. Da -da -da -da. Huh. Amazing. Let's make that bigger, just so you can see it better. College football playoff resume. Sooners versus Buckeyes. Look at that. Strength of record. Fifth versus eighth. Strength of schedule, 31st versus 57th. Top 25 wins, 3 versus 2. Losses, Texas by 3, a ranked opponent, who they're now facing again. Purdue by 29, unranked opponent, still unranked. Could only dream of being ranked. So yeah. I mean, obviously the Sooners could lose, the Buckeyes could lose... Georgia could win, and Bama only drops to four. But if it has to come between... Oh, wait, it's in front of me. Anyway, if it has to come between these two teams, my money's on the Sooners. Yeah, since the BCS and the BCS would probably pick Ohio State. Ohio State could lose, Oklahoma Sooners could win, and they'd probably still pick Ohio State. But I'm not saying they're rigged, but it's kind of rigged. Which is why you got a team like UFC, who's undefeated, Two years in a row, being, yay, you're going to be ranked 25th now. You've gone undefeated two years in a row. Enjoy being ranked for the first time this year. All right, that's not true. They're like, what, 10th? Should be able to look that up real quick. Oh, I'm sorry, they're 9th. Undefeated two years in a row. There's a 9-3 and three team ranked ahead of them. They are undefeated two years in a row, and there's a 9-3 and three team ranked ahead of them. Not saying it's bullshit, but it's bullshit. So yeah, if it comes down between these two teams, they both win their bold, their championship games and all that, who goes to the playoffs? My money? Sooners. But, we'll have to wait and see what the BCS does. Anyways, what do you guys think? Should some of these teams be up higher? Should some of them be lower? Do you think it's going to be neither of those teams making it to the playoffs? Do you think, oh, well, let's see, who could leave from? Who knows, maybe UCF. Keeps winning and all that. Wait, do they even have a game left? They do. Them versus Memphis in a champ game. So let's say they win. Clemson loses. Georgia loses. Oklahoma loses. Ohio State. Let's say everybody loses except for Alabama and Notre Dame because Notre Dame doesn't have a championship game. So Alabama wins. Notre Dame wins. Clemson loses their champ game. Joe Drops lose their champ game. Oklahoma loses theirs. Ohio State loses theirs. So everyone loses theirs. Could the UCF actually make it in? No. Every, let's say Alabama had the best record at 9-3. and Then though Clemson was 8-4. and four, Notre Dame was 7-5. and five. While UCF was undefeated. I still don't think they'd put them in the playoffs. You would have, you have Alabama having the best record at 10-2. and two. Everyone else being worse than that. And I still don't think they put UCF in as being undefeated two years in a row. But that's business. Oh, wait. It's a billion-dollar business, but the players are not allowed to make a single fucking penny. But they get scholarships, dude. 
Yeah, the number one scholarship in OSU is what? Underwater basket weaving? Yeah, they're not going there for anything like that, dude. They're going there for football. So maybe... Oh no, this player got a pair of shoes. That happened 18 years ago. Yes, but now every single win from 18 years ago to now has been stripped. All bowl wins stripped. Every single player that's currently on the team is going to be taken out back and shot. Yeah, how about we get rid of that? How about you let players know, get a pair of shoes or sign a football so they can get some money for food while you make billions off of their names? Just a little bit of a rant there at the end. But anyways, what do you guys think? As always, like, subscribe, comment down below, and have a wonderful day.